there, folks, and welcome back to the Carpatania campaign. Last time, we finished our conquest of a number of additional tribes in the Terraconesis region up in the north, securing a mountainside border that goes all the way to the Greek city-state of Emporion and the coastal area where the Pyrenees Mountains do have that pass up into Gaul. So we've secured some nice new defensive land. When we do spot a opportunity to go for Emporion, we definitely will to finish off our control of this area over here. But otherwise, we have just been securing our gains, continuing to see our economy flourish as uh, we're able to trade away more resources. We do have a lot of AE built up and not very fast AE reduction. Although uh, the tyranny we've accrued from selling off some of those nobles has been helping with our AE loss and our stability loss is pretty dire. We really need to do a sacrifice basically yesterday, but unfortunately um, we are currently in the middle of powering through the very last bits of the Pearl of Contestania mission tree. I've completely given up on doing the Temple of Erbiaka line here, which in my opinion just isn't really worth the investment, in, if anything, in time it would take to do this. We're going to grab this once we get one more trade route in Katapatania in a couple of months. At least it'll take uh, then some time after we get it going in a couple of months. Then we'll have to wait a year for embellished Toletum to finish, and the permanent bonus we get in Toletum from that will be very strong for the rest of the game. And then finally we can finish the mission after that and finally move on to the Monarchy Reform mission, which will be pretty exciting. Speaking of which, we are still under the leadership of our now 69-year-old Rokusa Karosus. He uh, does have arthritis, and at this age he will start to have more serious health problems, but the game thinks he is healthy, so I suppose that is one way to look at it. If we do end up performing with him in charge, the heir would be the now 45-year-old Breto Maris Carusas, who has not actually gotten married nor have any of his siblings. Is this because these are the... the um, no, that's not right, because they're not considered the heirs under the game system. I don't know why they haven't gotten married. Have these other characters gotten married? No. Okay. It's a bit of a problem, but uh, we'll see if we need to arrange a uh, abrupt wedding. Um, I think the chances of Retomatis dying unexpectedly are not super high. We'll see what we have to do in terms of dealing with a possible immediate succession crisis, but hopefully that doesn't end up being a problem. We'll see basically what happens with that. If we end up with the Carosas family being the monarchal family, that's totally fine, as obviously Brakusa does get a big amount of credit for the work, in the lore at least, for the work that was done to establish the great uh, tribal nation of Carpatania now spanning across the entire basically eastern half of Iberia, but of course the work is not done yet. I think we're good to go ahead and uh, resume. <clears throat> okay. All right, what's going on in the world? Car uh, Carthage is currently at peace. How do they feel about me? Very negative. I'm not too surprised. How's Rome feeling? Not very positive either, but they are pretty interested in the idea of an alliance. Uh, the 50 from diplomatic relations is kind of interesting. Um, I guess it is just from diprep. Do we have that much diprep by default? That can't be right. 25 for Carthage. For, for some reason, Rome likes our diprep more than Carthage does. I do think a Roman alliance to help me fight Carthage is a pretty good idea, as Rome would likely want to fight Carthage. If I, you know what, I, I was a little bit late on that, but we're still within the same month, so very, very small micro mistake. Let's go ahead and get our final business investment. Watch me just, like, oh, accidentally click that one. <laughs> That'd be the misclick of the century right there. I think I'd probably die on the spot of exhaustion if I had to wait for another 80 <laughs> political influence. Okay, entice business investments. Here we go province of Katapatania. <sighs> there it is. Okay, so we'll get that going, and then we'll be able to uh, get the mission done after that. Anyways, but um, I think an alliance with Rome to help me fight Carthage is an interesting idea for the future. I probably want to go through my reformation first before we start thinking about ideas like that. Although I will lose out a bit on my very strong... Uh, where is it? Um, let's see... Yeah, 12.50% as a tribe. I think I have a lower levy bonus as a monarchy, but I'll have more control over the generals because I'll be able to assign governors. Although then that's also kind of a downside in some ways. Anyways, we'll worry about that later. In a stunning display of generosity, Carta Mandua, a well-loved member of our religious institution, 
has commissioned a grand festival out of her own pocket. Superb. Carpetanian happiness is going to be just all right with me. Also, all of our new fortresses up here are going to be finishing as well, which is great. Um, I could move the capital to Urgeum so it's in a slightly more defended spot. And I think before any war with Emporion, I probably should do that. Although, if I can get away with not doing that, because it will be protected by Urgeum, I suppose we can just move it directly to Empori um, once we are able to. So I think that's probably the way we're going to approach that. Uh, the Celtiberian local power of Deniquia has claimed Katapatania. Is that so? Well, they're welcome to come and try and take it from me. <laughs> this is my little uh, little bro, Carpetanian, uh, uh, you know, neighbor over here. These guys have had. It's like looking into the mirror of the like the fail version of yourself. You know, like this is successful Carpetania and this is unsuccessful Carpetania. In fairness to them, they have remained clicked up with their defensive league, and they've been, so far, not a priority target for me, so it's not like I've tried and failed to fight them, but either way, it's kind of funny to see them claiming me. But we'll uh, we'll take this territory from them later. Once I'm ready to expand into Galakia, I feel like of all the places to expand into, Galakia is not high on my list. But uh, we will still fight these guys, actually next, probably, for the rest of the Terraconessus territory south of the mountain. We shall see. Hmm. Fortresses are done up here. Very nice. Okay, and then I do have a fair bit of money saved up here. Do I want to spend this money on anything in particular? This is just going to require um, importing one of these four resources, which I can't believe this is actually the requirement. I, I feel like I'm misreading this, because this seems extremely easy. I import sto stone all the time anyways as part of my building micro, so this would really not be a big deal. I'm actually surprised I'm not importing marble. I guess it's not really a priority. I guess having tyranny actually isn't the worst thing right now to help with my AE loss. I think that's pretty important to slow down my stability loss. Hmm. Alright, let's reinvest this money, I think. Although, actually, you know what? It may not be the worst thing to have a bit of a war chest in case uh, we need that for the Reformation, or we need that if there's a succession coming up, and then we need to kind of react to it. Hmm. We're going to have the Omen uh, in a few months. Let's wait and, and do the Omen and kind of see if we want to do some some projects in the nation. It doesn't hurt to build up a bit of a war chest, though. It's kind of a curse name placement down here. Not so sure about that. Hmm. How are things looking in the territories? Do we have any imminent revolts? Sort of. Uh, Iller Cavonia, as usual, is having trouble. Point thirteen. Looks like uh, Mingaras Gerta Gertautetis, the tribal chief of who is this? Uh, Sudanoia has been um, deified. All right, that's fine. Um, Kasatani is having some trouble too. I think once we get our stability under control, all of my problems will go away. He says, <laughs> sweating profusely and, and making this motion with this shirt. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Finally, people want to trade with me. Please take my goods. Yes. Trade my goods. March of time. Age finds us all in the end. Even the priests and surgeons shake their heads when confronted with the inevitable decline of the human body. As Barakusa Kerosis is finding out, he may not have much time left. He's got dementia. All right. Uh, how sad. Well, I am not going into any more major wars with a seven martial dementia-ridden chief magistrate. We're going to take it easy now and just uh, coast along on our strong economy. Although that did hurt my economy because he's providing his finesse for the home region. Incidentally, the next... Oh, hold on, wait. No, this is right. Um, uh, Wodanessa would be the next one. Katsuna Wodanessa. She's got terrible finesse. I just noticed two finesse. Yikes. All right, commercial venture is done, which means expand trade in Carpetania is done, which means two more building slots in Toletum permanently. The city of Toletum and the entire surrounding province of Carpetania requires a greater number of imports in order to grow and thrive. <laughs> grow and thrive, with no D. Grow and thrive. Uh, we should entice merchants and traders to open new routes to our province so that we may import more goods and food to its capital. Okay. Now, if this is correct, all I need to do is... Huh? Where's my new tr uh, You know what, let me just wait for the new trade route to pop up. It's probably going to be on the at the end of the month or something. Because there's always a slight delay after the commercial ventures are done. 
we'll see, we shall see. All right, first of January. Still no new trade route yet. Do I control any of these territories by chance? No. Oh my gosh, definitely not. Yeah, one downside of playing as a druidic nation is that the holy sites are going to be just all over the place and really hard to go deal with if you want to claim one for yourself. I feel like every god at this point basically has a holy site. Many of them do, at least. Anyways, as for who to go for, I think we want to go for uh, Belly Sama once again. Do we keep up with... Well, first of all, I should say that I'm not switching any gods or doing anything that costs stability right now. I do not have the spare stability to spend like that. I think we just go for Belly Sama again. I guess I could go for manpower, but I don't think that's a priority. We've got plenty of manpower. Lugas for the citizen output could be good as well, in all honesty. Is there a better... I don't know, let's not worry about that right now. I don't have the stability. I don't know. Um, what's my citizen population looking like now? 45. And they're probably mostly... Do I have a pop map mode? Or like a, a pop like rank map mode? Probably not. It's population, I guess. Yeah, I got 10 in, in Toiletum... And then a bunch more just kind of scattered all over the place. We got like one here or there, mostly in the big, the bigger cities, of course. But citizen output would mean manpower and research. But the research rates are still not going to be amazing because I'm a tribe. I think under the circumstances, Belly Sama for the pop simulation is still the priority. Yeah, fifty-six percent unity does not result in a great win bonus here. <clears throat> Let's go for Belly Sama for the pop assimilation. As uh, we have done before. And then in terms of the bonuses here, do I want to change any of these? Not really. I also can't afford to even if I wanted to. I think these are all the right ones still for me. Okay. Alright, so with the money we've got here... Um, I don't really want to go into a major war. I could go into a small war, but... Eh, let's see. What are we dealing with here? 28. Alright, these guys are actually pretty populous. 58 integrated. What else do they bring in? They bring in Wisconia, actually, as well. Although Wisconia is still fighting their giant war with everybody, so they're probably not going to be very involved. And then who else? Oh yeah, uh, Termodigia. They don't bring in Arawia, actually. I think they may have before, but maybe misremembering. I think these guys are oh, these guys are in the other defensive league down here. Okay, I'm seeing them mixed up. This is probably doable with just my main levy. And I could bring in the Terracanesis Force. One more little uh, war during the tribal stage to secure the rest of southern, sort of uh, south, uh, southwestern Terracanesis. I mean, even with a limited peace deal of just this, I fully annex with this deal Tivia, and I mostly annex Atawakia. I could take this and then get the nobles and then sell the territory to somebody else, so I'm not in the other region, you know, unnecessarily. It's definitely one idea, but I'm a bit worried about the AE. I think with just these two, I'm, I'm thinking 10 to 20, no, 20 is too much, probably 10 to 15 AE. By the time the war's done, I should have enough AE room for no problem, but then that extra AE slows down my stability recovery, and I'm a bit worried about my stability situation. It's really, really bad. I still need to save up enough PI to do another sacrifice to then get my stability situation kind of evened out. But then again, by the time I'd be finishing the war, I'd probably have almost enough stability, or almost enough PI to do the sacrifice to then uh, get my stability situation evened out. And the high AE just means worse stability in the long run. It doesn't mean a burst of worse stability. So I think this is probably doable. The question is, do I want to do this right now with my um, very impaired Berkusa leading the way? I guess this could be one last little war to kind of end things off for his reign. I mean, I say little war. It's against four participants, so it's not exactly a little war. But the numbers here aren't very concerning. I mean, 165 Katapatanians. Maybe I should be a little concerned. 62, and then let's round it to 30, round it to 20, round it to 30. They've got a similar number of integrated pops if I'm uh, rounding up for them or rounding down for me. 
but they're going to be disorganized. They're all going to be in different tribal levies. They're not going to coordinate very well. And um, also, Wisconia is unlikely to be super involved. And I'm blocking Wisconia over here with the Carta Fort. Actually, no, I'm not because. No, I am, because this is within the Carta Fort's coverage. Yeah, because this, this connects here. So we are actually blocking over there. These guys need to get through Carta to get anywhere into my northern territories, so that we should be fine on that front. And getting all this territory would finally clean up this area that's been kind of a mess for a long time. I really want to move the capital back to Beia Desolata, but I still, still have not had enough room to do it. One of these days I'll get to, but not today. Maybe tomorrow, though. Maybe soon. This is just one province. <sighs> ah, man. Um, I guess we can do this while we're doing the Reformation. I think that would be fine. We got some manpower to spare. Let's go ahead and give this a go. Famous, famous last words here. Um, while we got the higher levy size modifier, we may as well get this last little thing. As dealing with uh, north um, northwestern Terrakinesis is going to be a bit complicated. Now, I will say that if I was a greedy person, which as this campaign has shown, I definitely am not. Please don't check to verify that claim. But if I was uh, driven by insatiable greed for conquest, I would look at this Wisconian territory, which is also part of Terraconesis, and consider that I could also get that in the peace deal. But then we're talking about maybe like a 20 AE, 25 AE. I think probably not 30, but more than 15-ish. And then we're back in the danger zone, both in terms of getting above 50 AE, which is the threshold I want to avoid, but also dealing with more stability problems. I mean, if I go for a big conquest of all of this thing, and maybe I get this province and sell it off to get more nobles to sell, and then I take the rest of Wisconia, but then it's a bit more of an involved war. I have a lot of money, could hire mercenaries if needed. And Wisconia is currently preoccupied by this war. I mean, while this is occupied, I don't know if I can really, like, dislodge this. I think what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to kind of play, I'm going to cut it down the middle. I think I want to go for a big war where I also take Wisconian territory, which secures this side of the mountains, or this, like, side of the border for me, so I control both sides of the mountain border. Both sides in, in terms of the line of the mountain border, not both sides of the border on either side of the mountains, but I control either end of the border is probably the better way to phrase that. And then from there, what's left in the in the region is this kind of weird network of tribes that I, I think they're all yeah they're mostly all in this defensive league together. So that's another war I can do later to clean things up. I think fully securing Terraconesis and then moving on to the other regions is probably the way to go. Just so things are kind of set in place here. Yeah, I think, I think this is the way to do it. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to proceed and, and wait for, oh, here it is finally. Let's bring in, um, actually I guess we, we may as well bring in what, what uh, which resource is the most valuable. I think marble is going to be the most valuable. So let's bring in some marble from Messilia. Now we can embellish to let them. I don't know, I think I need to keep the marble for the whole time. So that's fine. Marble's 0.4 per month, so that's pretty good. All right, Tuletum is the capital of a great tribe, and yet it is not as grand and imposing as befits a city of that stature. Let us undertake great works and turn this great city into the envy of the world. All right. Oh, we get some events in the meantime. Rise of Tuletum. The announcement of Brucusa Carusus that Tuletum will open her doors to all able artisans, masons, and architects have been sent out to every corner of her tribe. It is his will that no expense be spared to embellish the city and make it a true gem of Carpatanian culture. The world will look at my works. 20 PI? Holy moly. I did not know this event chain gives you PI. All right. Pearl of, Car of Carpatania Pearl Mission. I rescind all of my previous complaints. This is a goaded mission and nothing will change my mind. PI for free. Look at that. All right, that's pretty good. So uh, we'll keep the marble going for now. I'll probably trade out for a second copy of glass if I can get a second copy of glass for the civ, the civ bonus. Also, 56 civ value in Toletum is crazy. Holy moly. Yeah, Toletum is going hard. This is going to be a really, really strong city in the late game with all these bonuses we're giving it. I mean, this is the, the nice thing about the Pearl Mission for all of my, my whinging about <laughs> its weird structure. It does give really good long-term bonuses for your capital and for cities, so yeah. That is uh, that is the situation. 
So we're going to wait for Wasconia to finish their war, and then we're going to kind of evaluate the situation. If we, I'll probably still do this attack. Well, I mean, if Wasconia wins the war, which I don't think they will, these guys aren't involved in the war for inexplicable reasons. Actually, I think Wasconia might be the aggressor. How are they fighting all these different people? This is, I think, two different defensive leagues. Or is this one, is this just the one big defensive league? Hold on. No, there's a, there's a, a sixth one, but I, I can't tell. Who's the sixth member that's not in the defensive league? It's not these guys. Are these guys, wait, hold on, wait, no, this, this is six. Yeah, th this is five and the six. So, Wasconi is just fighting the big defensive league. You know, this is actually fine, because I can just attack whoever wins that war. If Wasconia wins and takes more territory, I can take more territory from them in the peace deal. Okay, well, either way, we're going to wait on declaring up here. Social stratification. The renovations of Toletum is in some ways fundamentally reshaping the city, and not only through the addition of new quarters in and around the new buildings. Every part of the city has been given a new focus and a change of status. The commercial district has largely reoriented itself to support the new class of artisans, scribes, administrators that now make up a much larger part of the city's fabric, and even in the slums a new social order is slowly materializing. As part of the wider works we are undertaking, we could extend the renovations to another part of the city as well. Actually, it's good that I've got some money saved up, because these things, yeah, they, they're probably going to require some money, so I'm glad that I saved up this money here. Um, I could get 10, so it's 10 years, 10 years. Uh, this gives prestige and loyalty. This makes me lose a little. Okay, we're gonna probably do one of these. You know what? Um, local tax 30% is kind of a wild bonus. Let me take a look at the, the tax out of uh, Toletum and see what we'd be getting from that. Uh, how do I see this? Okay, wow. 0.23 from just Toletum. So Toletum by itself is worth 0.23 in tax. This would actually, I think, be a noticeable boost. And it's for 10 years as well. Or pop motion speed plus 5 base. What kind of... Let me get oriented around how much of a bonus that would be. Is there any promotion happening here? Uh, no, because... Let me look in another place where there is promotion to see how much plus five base would actually be. Is there any place that has promotion happening? Everyone's just demoting everywhere. Okay, I can't tell. This is probably pretty strong. But I don't have the ratio to support a ton of promotion. I already have uh, a lot of noble ratio from those academies, so this wouldn't actually be as strong. As the promotion bonus is only going to be helpful within the boundaries set by the ratio. So I think going for the tax bonus is the way to go. Pay 80 gold, which is fine right now, and get 30% local tax in Toletum for 10, uh, 10 years. All right, 14.31. 14.55, all right. That's a noticeable improvement from just one city. Very good. All right. Let's just wait and see what happens with Wasconia. I could just do the attack while they're distracted and then go for the smaller deal. Which isn't the worst idea, and then I can just fight Wasconia later. I think that might also be a, a reasonable way to do it, because I don't know what's going to happen with the Wasconia War. But that being said, I do have a lot more manpower room, so I may as well let my manpower recover up to its cap before I decide to go for a war. Not that I'm worried about running out of manpower with my playstyle, because I'm very manpower... I feel like I'm pretty risk-averse with my manpower, as I try to be. But it's more that I think I may as well build up my manpower max before I go for it. No need to rush, you know. Alright, 41 PI, very good. How are things looking over here? Some of these religious situations are a little on the close side. This one may need to be conversion, but I guess it's already on assimilation, so let's not mess around with it too much. This one here needs to change, although it's a one tile, so it doesn't matter too much right now. Alright, this is all this is all correct. Trade away wood. Yep. All right. Who's their new ally? Quaus. They've allied a city state. Okay. 
Carthage with their very smart diplomacy. Once again, look at this. Rome is obliterating Delmatia. Alright, I think Rome is going to be getting... Have they fought... I think they did fight Epirus earlier. I vaguely remember seeing something about that. I think Epirus controlled some territory over here. But I think Rome and Epirus are likely going to fight again. Epirus is allied with Antigonids as well. What's left of them? Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this dire situation. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. Alright. We just need to get to 50. And then we can do... What Was I thinking 80 earlier? It's 50. So for some reason I was thinking 80 was the cost. But 80 was what I was saving for before. It's just 50 now for this. Alright, no war exhaustion at least. That's pretty good. Hmm. What do we have here? Miraculous recovery. Vercruza seems to be in remission from his previous ailment. What, arthritis? Is he in remission? It doesn't seem to be. He still has dementia and arthritis. Do you have another ailment that I wasn't aware of? Okay, I don't know what's going on. He's recovered from his just very serious case of nothing. Alright, uh, Todia Carosa has suggested a... Oh, yeah, we've read this before. Ooh, okay, yes, absolutely. Six stability for ten PI, always a good trade, even if I'm trying to build up PI. Oh, man, if I could just if I could just get to 50 PI and then do this, <laughs> that would be a bit better. But I... Oh, you know what? I can wait a little bit. Ooh. I, can I go into negative PI? I might be able to do something kind of cheesy here. What's the... Uh, is there a Q on this? Why was I allowed to unpause this? I guess because it was a cute event before. Come on, please, let me just get away with this. Oop. Okay. Okay. Alright, negative... I mean, it, it costed the same either way, but we managed to do the um, Divine Sacrifice earlier than we would have otherwise, so I am happy with that. That is some nice little uh, event cheese for you. Love that. Okay, stability is... I thought stability would be zeroed out, but that was a little optimistic. It, it basically halved the severity of my stability decline, but this is now a bit more manageable. And our AE is declining at a, um, a reasonable pace as well. Anyways, uh, corruption and crime. There has been the hope of many, or it has been the hope of many, that the buildings of a new capital district in Toletum will allow us to be free from old corruption and crime, things that have at times been seen as endemic to our old capital. Great buildings, uh, great building projects such as ours can themselves bring out those who would seek clandestine opportunities. A growing black market for government contracts has begun to build up under our eyes, and local gangs are extorting workers and store owners alike in the new district. Okay, so um, this is definitely worth it. 15% output for 10 years? Holy moly. Wow, okay. That's that's quite a lot. Um, yeah, this is a no-brainer. I mean, 200 gold is expensive, but this is the sort of modifier I would pay 200 gold for. And this is just absurd. Population output reduction for 10 years and corruption for Berkusa. Even though he's old, I'm not going to go for it. We must root out this filth before it is too late. Whew, man, all right. Very minor change to our actual economic situation, but I am still happy with that. All right. You know, what I could do is I could actually build some uh, infrastructure in some of these cities that I've built. That wouldn't be the worst idea. In particular, I think that building, um, be I don't I can't build a theater until I have gradual economic integration. Where do I get that? Oh, it's down here. Okay. I, I want to go this way anyways, so yeah, we're not too far away from Grand Theater. Oh, all right, Wasconia finished their war. Um, I, th I think this was a white piece. I, I don't think anyone took anything. Wasconia may have taken this, but I don't, I don't really think so. Everyone's got a truce with them. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but now if we wanted to go for our plan, we could go for it now. 
Hmm. I think our claim is on Tibia in particular. I guess we could attack Tadequia as well. But I don't want to take this territory. I want to take the Tidian territory, so I would want to attack Tibia. Oh, man. Let me think about this for a minute. It's 1v5. Yeah, I was saying earlier 1v4, but I wasn't including Wasconia in the count. With Wasconia involved, um, I think they may have a comparable number of integrated pops. But again, the main difference is the organization. They're not going to be quite as organized as I am. I mean, they're not being played by a experienced compared to Rome player. Hmm. How would I go about... 16 pops, or 16 units as well. This is a good timing while we got the bonus. I think doing this while we have the levy size from being a tribe, because we're going to have a lower levy size as a, as a monarchy. It's probably a good idea. And we can hire mercs if absolutely necessary, but I hopefully wouldn't need to do that. Alright, let's, let's give this a go. I'm a bit worried about any more events that cost a lot of money, but we got a really strong economy right now. I think we can get away with this. This is just a good opportunity to punch these guys out of my region. Alright. Let's go up to... Uh, I could increase the pay as well, just to really seal the deal. I think this is probably worth going for, since we're not going to use mercs. Then pay for my forts as well. That's going to be expensive. Alright, raise the forces. Where's my region line? It's up here. Raise the forces here. Everybody come up here. We're going to start with a probably an assault on Sagantia, because that's going to be the war target. And then let's raise the force up here and just bring them down as well. Alright. Organize everybody here. Just to be thorough. You know, this is actually not fortified. But they're going to raise their forces there, so I can't run in to do something funny up here. Plus, it's going to be protected by this fort up here anyways. We'll worry about that later. I think the plan here is to secure uh, this area here. Once we get Sagantia, we have a fort line that goes like this. And then this fort here... Oh, man. We'll need... Okay. We're not going to be fully protected until we get Waluka as well. So we'll need to... I think I may want to assault Sagantia and then start sieging Walukia manually while I leave my, my infantry behind in my territory to recover their strength to then do an assault on Walukia. I think that's the way to do it. After really just use my infantry strength really precisely in a uh, in a strategy like for a strategy like this. Actually speed three while we're not at war quite yet. debts. We were pleased to tell you that we received some of our back taxes that were owed to us. While we regret that it took so long to receive what is rightfully ours, at least our citizens are mindful of what they owe to the Carpetanian state. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got the Carpetanian IRS on the case here. Alright, I've never seen this event before in my life. I don't have any idea where this is coming from, but I will I will take it. That is a little bit of extra security. Also, our economy is really struggling now, but at least compared to what it was like before. But that's fine. All right, everybody get organized now. Let's find Pertusa's main stack here is. Shock action is correct. We have some heavy infantry as well in our force now. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, this is a stronger infantry force for sure, so that's quite handy. Heavy cab on the flanks, <laughs> love that. Attachment allowed. Everybody join in, right, that's right. Well, attach it well. Got so many forces here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to just power in, do an assault at Sagantia, and then bring the infantry probably around to. Uh, 
probably bring the infantry around to Aque, Aque Bilba Tenorum to then bring over to Waluka once they recover. All right, let's uh, let's go for it. We've gotten prepared. The time is now. Okay, here we go. We're going to be attacking Tibia, Wasconia, Termodigia, Atawakia, and Deniquia at long last. All right, in we go. 8.5k marching in. We should have pretty good, we should be in pretty good shape as this gets started. Let's go down to speed two. Okay, these guys, uh, there may be a little bit of a naval presence from Wisconia, but it shouldn't be, too oh, we're gonna get a little stack wipe to start things off. Off to a good start, all right. There's my stack wipe, nice. All right, so I think we want to... Oh, yeah, they're also on partial. Oh, this this is like the least defended fort I've ever seen. Let's just do the assault immediately. This should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's the technical term for it. All right, we have captured it. How's my infantry looking? Uh, it's probably fine just to go... Oh, you know what? That is a level three fort. I did not know about that. Ooh, okay. Um, I would have still felt comfortable declaring with this development, but I was not expecting these guys to have built a level 3 fort over here. It's a little out of nowhere. Okay, well that's going to be a bit more complicated to deal with, but we can still deal with it. And I think what we probably want to do... I think my forces should still replenish in enemy territory. Just for, it'll just be slow. So let's um, let's head up here and just get the siege going. It's going to take a long time. I'm going to need basically all of my strength on the siege to keep it going. And fortunately, even if my horses can't do assaults or they don't participate in assaults, they still count for the siege. So doing an assault up here is a little out of the question. Even with a breach, I would probably need to have uh, very, very damaged garrisons to feel comfortable. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, hold on. <laughs> I just I looked at this and I got a little excited. Okay, yeah, these guys have a full garrison. All right. Well, we've uh, we've committed to this horse. So now we got to see it through. So let's just uh, get to it. You know, I, hold on. Um, did I just cancel my movement that I was locked into? Was I saying that right? I thought only the AI could do that. I guess I can cheat too. That's kind of fun. Let's see if we can catch these guys. I would definitely want to start cutting down some of their forces while I have the chance. Um, as in a war like this, in a war of attrition, the five of them will win over me with their combined manpower pools just eventually, so we need to try to cut down their numbers early on when we can. Coming of Toletum. Never before has the streets of Toletum been as clean and its gardens so well kept. The Marble Clan Council Hall Meeting and Feast Houses now make it immediately apparent that this is not just a city, but also a very, the very center of a major power and urban expression of splendor and wealth. Toletum is now a city of marble. There we go. Two extra building slots in Toletum permanently, 15% manpower from Toletum permanently, and civ level in Toletum permanently, and two nobles in Toletum. That is excellent. We can now finish the mission, and I'm not even going to look at these other op objectives any further. The mission is over. <sighs> there it is. Okay, first things first, before we go over there. Um, I'm going to trade out the marble. Oh, I can't get more glass. Shoot. Uh, what do I want, actually, as my other resource? I really wanted more glass. I guess I can trade in more gold for value. That's probably what I want to do right now, to be honest. Let's trade in more gold, sure. Alright, and then... As for my mission, I think it's tribal reform time. I don't think we can mess around any further. Just gotta go for it. What is this? Stabilize and grow Terrakinesis. Now this is like the non-capital version of Pearl of uh, so-and-so. Alright, tribal reform. The time has come for a great country to transition into a more civilized, sedentary state. Opinions differ greatly on how this can be best uh, achieved, even among our most ardent supporters. Some argue that we should adopt a represent representative mode of governance, while others feel that we, that we, a hereditary monarchy, would be preferable. Transition to a monarchy or republic. Now, the question is, do I want to start this with Brucusa as the chief, as I think it will consider his family 
the monarchal family, even if we have a transition during... I think there's an argument for actually, oddly enough, deliberately not progressing to this mission right now, as I'm worried about something funny happening if Bidapusa dies. He is in poor health now, which... So dying, him dying is actually very possible. Even if I wanted him to be the first monarch, it could be kind of glitchy, and if he dies in the middle of the mission, I don't know what's going to happen. As at the moment, I think under the tribal system, it, the... Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, Karsuna would become the new chief, and then if his family is becoming the monarchal family and she's the chief, I don't know how that's going to work. I think it may make sense to wait for the succession to the Wodanessa family and then do the reform. I know that probably some of you would have loved to see Brakusa be our first king, but I'm just worried about his health. 70, arthritis, and dementia. I mean, maybe we can power through the mission really fast, but I remember the reform mission does require a fair bit of investment, and it kind of takes a minute to get through it. Plus, as I've talked about plenty of times before, I think Karasuna does have better possible heirs. Uh, Snordix, this is actually my super corrupt uh, former governor, so he's actually one of the kids. Hmm, okay, well, maybe she's not amazing either. I could actually wait until Rukusa dies and also Karasuna dies, although she's, uh, well, she's a lunatic. But she's still healthy right now. I could just wait on doing the reform, but I don't really want to wait too long. Because I don't know for sure if the reform will dynamically... Because I think it generates the missions when I click to start the reform mission, right? So I think I want to wait until I'm happy with the current uh, clan chief becoming the new leader. Because assuming that, this, that the uh, succession works in the correct way, or in the way that it's currently listed, looks like the Ambonis family, or the Amboni, I would become the, the next family after. And this is looking a bit more promising. This guy's in poor health, too. All my chiefs are so old. <laughs> I, I got ready to reform too quickly. I've got just the first generation. They're all still in power. I mean, I guess I could try to rush through it. Um, I'm just, I'm worried about something funny happening with the, um, with who becomes the ruling family. And, like, it causing weird problems with my current government. Uh, man, this is a really tough call. Because I don't know if Brokusa is going to die right away. Poor health. Um, I mean, there's also very poor health. And then I think near death is the one after that. So we may have a little bit more time. But he, his health has been deteriorating pretty quickly here. I think the time is running out. Man. This is really genuinely a tough call. Let me take one more look at his uh, yeah, 5004. This is just dire. This guy's also very unhealthy, too. You know, uh, Dimnorix actually looks like he's in really good health. My concern is, though, so if I could get D Dimnorix as the next king after Brokusa, I would go for it. The problem is, I can't, like, assassinate... Well, I mean, I could through certain means, but I can't easily get rid of my my two older twin sons that are both nincompoops. I got the godson, who's uh, much younger, but uh, this would be really tricky to pull off. Plus, the danger as well is that if Burkusa becomes the king and then he dies right after, then I'm stuck with Britomaris, who's pretty bad. The zero finesse is brutal. I mean, I can get away with uh, lower martial kings by making use of mercs, but then I'm not able to sack as, as often. And, um... The finesse in uh, in Contestania being zero would be really difficult to deal with. I think I need to... I'm going to wait. I, I, I don't want to risk it. I, the, I'm actually more worried about Brito Maris becoming the king before I have time to get rid of him, as it would take time to plan an assassination and do all that stuff. There's no guarantee that it would work. Yeah, I, I would rather deal with the very like below average, but not terrible at anything, Dumno Kowel as the king, <laughs> which is like, I hope he's not listening to me say this right now, I hope he's not, not like behind me right now as I say this, but I mean, look at this, like this is like, I, I don't have a lot of great options here is the long and short of it, so let's just, let's just proceed and uh, continue along 7th of January. Alright, this should be probably not a stack wipe, but should be a pretty good little victory here. Alright. That is a good little victory. 
as I anticipated. Let's go grab a stack of items down here. And then we'll swing around to that. Oh, never mind. We'll swing down here and grab, get to these guys. They're going to get stuck in the zone of control of Sigantia. Yeah, now they're going to get caught here. And then we will um, swing back and go fight those guys. I could probably split my guys up to do this more efficiently, but um, I'm just really lazy. <laughs> That's honestly the reason I'm not doing that. Um, but these little stack wipes are going to really add a lot of value to the whole situation. I have to get the siege underway sooner or later, but I guess in fairness, with this kind of siege, I kind of do need everybody there, as most of the numbers of my force are with the infantry squad, and I'm not sending Cab over to... Well, I guess I could send Cab over to start the siege. Hmm. No, let's, let's just keep keep doing this. Uh, these guys are probably going to try to sneak around up here, but... Yeah, I can't let them get into my back line. I, I have a, a hole in my fort coverage right here that I need to keep plugged up with my men. It's like, uh, you know, it's like the scene from the one Pokemon episode from the very original... Get ready for just the, the reference of a lifetime here. It's like the scene from the original series of Pokemon where Ash plugs the hole in the cave so that his Pokemon don't freeze to death with his body. That's what I'm doing with my bed in the hole in the form. <laughs> exact one-to-one -one parallel reference right there. Man, I, I just, I dug real deep in the, in the core memories for that one. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you appreciated my very, very out-of-nowhere reference to Pokemon on that, on that one. <laughs> yeah, man. Sometimes I remember how old I am, and it's like, oh yeah, I remember watching the original series of Pokemon on VHS tape from Blockbuster. And some of you watching probably don't know what VHS tape or Blockbuster is or was. <laughs> it's kind of an alarming, uh, alarming thing to think about, but you know what? That's time for you. Time progresses. We all grow older. And, uh, yeah, things, uh, things move on. A little bit of a philosophical musing as we march our way to the, the inexplicable super fortress of Waluka. <laughs> Man. Here we go. Okay, let's get back into it here. Head in the game. We are arriving, and let's see what we're going to be dealing with here. Oh my god. <laughs> that was their full power level. 1,500 garrison. Oh man, this is gonna be just miserable. All right, everyone needs to just. Uh, I hope everyone brought their camping gear because we're gonna all be standing around here for a minute. Oh, of course they're right there too. It's just a lumen. All right, we're starting at negative forty-nine percent. That's not the best sign in the world. They've also got um, fort defense built up. This is just gonna be miserable. All right, let's get this thing going. We've got a lot of money saved up at least in case we need to hire Mercs, which I really don't want to. I mean, at this point as well, I, I, if this was a level 2 fort, I might consider hiring mercs to get more assault power, but against, even with merc support, this kind of assault is not going to be very likely. So we just got to start eating away at this. Oh man, they're going to... The other problem is they're going to uh, reinforce and slip by me and get into my back line over here. Oh man. If, see, if Waluka had been level 1 and this had been level 3, I would have been able to grab Voluka, or uh, Waluka and then I'd have a fort line right here. But as it stands, I'm still vulnerable to these guys, so I may have to actually leave a skeleton crew to keep the fort thing where it is, and then go catch these guys over here. Did I enter from my... yeah, I think I did. I really hope I... no, I entered from Logney, that's good. So I can leave back out to Logney to try to catch these guys over here in uh, Gusto Briga, if necessary. Oh, man, alright. Also, no sign of Wasconia so far. At least I don't think I've seen them yet, which is good. So let's just check and see, make sure that no one else has joined this war. <laughs> More people can come on in. Alright, these guys are going for it. Uh, man, I, I don't like this at all. Um, let, let me try to bait an attack here, even though they've got all this defensiveness bonus. This is still a good fight to take. Let's leave behind... Oh, man. Um... We've got eight Marshal, that's, that's fine. Let's leave behind... Sarah, two, three. Let's see behind uh, these 1500. Detach everybody. And this is probably going to not. It's going to probably hold it in place, but it's not going to be enough to progress. Yeah, that's what I thought. So let's move down here and then try to catch these guys. 
Oh, wait a minute. I have to go through Aqua uh, Bilba Tenorum, right, because of the port coverage. Okay, that's... Let's let's see if these guys go for the attack. Let's uh, let's pr pretend we're doing this. I mean, the AI I think reads my my movement inputs because the AI um, is uh, very well designed and has no problems at all. But okay, let's see if we can bait an attack like this. Although this wouldn't be a stack move. I think we'd hold out long enough for my guys to come back. Okay, they are actually walking away. Oh, hold on. I think we've successfully tricked them into making making this move here. And now what we do... Do we dare let this fight actually start and then come in late? What, what would be the time limit here? 20th of June? 13th of June? Okay, I do scare them off if I make that move. Okay, they're gonna get... Oh, no, no, never mind. The problem is I can't reach um, Numantia from this angle. I think what I need to do, I, I don't like doing this. I do have to split my forces up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send, okay. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do this uh, in a weird way here. I'm gonna send the force with the infantry back into um, Uluka, then who's left? It's almost 4K, it's an entirely Cav 4K. All right, we're gonna have you all attached to the Terraconesis Levy and do something a little funny here. With the Heavy Cab, we're not moving super fast, but we still are moving faster than this force that has infantry. All right, so we're gonna try to swing around and catch these guys in a bind and come in from this direction into the fort coverage. Or they're gonna get brave. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we do catch them here. It says river, river crossing, but that's literally not true. We're not crossing a river from this angle. Maybe the, the thing is just wrong about that. Is this really considered not a clear win? I mean, the nut, I mean, I don't agree with this. I think that it's not going to be a super amazing win, but I think we're going to win this fight. And they have one more marshal. I mean, they're in planes. This looks like a hills tile, but this is a plains tile. This would be hills. Yeah, we should take the fight here. I think... I think this should be fine. Is this... Oh my god, this is still not enough? How much do I need for a level 3 fort? That's 4.5k. Alright, that's a little alarming. Okay, well, we need to we need to knock this force away either way, so we have to go for this fight. Collapse of the Yankai. News has reached us by word of mouth that the once powerful Yankai have fallen into internal bickering strife and wanton power. Sorry. Wanton power strife. I just love saying it as like wanton. Like they're struggling over the wantons. <laughs> like, I want more wantons. Order them now. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, so that's a wanton power struggle for you. Numerous local chiefdoms have arisen from the ashes of the crisis, perhaps affording an opportunity to their watchful neighbors. The Yankai still retain a nominal leadership of some of the disparate clans, desperately clinging to their laughable hegemony. <laughs> Hopefully the hegemony that I create won't be laughable. Yeah. But um, something kind of funny about this event, though, is that whenever I see these collapse events, I look over at the nation, and they always look like they're doing just fine. So let's see what's going on with the Yankai. I mean, I I think they're doing fine. That did they collapse? You know, allegedly they did. I don't really see much collapsing going on. This the, unless are these guys a breakaway? I mean, maybe. Maybe it's like these are breakaway states. I mean, this is they they seem to be doing just fine to me. But okay, sure. That's a wanton power struggle for you. Not even once. All right. You know, we're getting here on multiple days, but it's only one Cav who's getting here late by one day, so that's not too bad. Alright, let's just see what we can do here. Oh, they're gonna just dodge me completely? That's, uh, not what I was expecting. Alright, I don't really want to attack them in hills now, but maybe we won't have the, uh, the, the uh, river crossing count, so let's wait for them to commit to this move, and then we'll go south. I wish that they were actually not gonna. I wish that one of them was not committed so that they would split, but nope. What was that orange prediction for a moment there? That seemed a little ominous. Also, we're back up to 4K, so that's actually good. We got a month of recovery. 
Oh, I think we would have arrived on the monthly ticks before, so it would have been the same either way. But let's just get this thing. Oh, was there? No, there's no river crossing here at all. The game just thinks there's a river. Like, well, there's definitely no river crossing here, so that's really uh, quite strange. All right, as expected, we're going to win this, although it's not going to be the cleanest of fights. But the important part is that we knock them back, which is what we really need. Ooh, uh, Iller Colonia went down into disloyalty. <sighs> All right, um... I probably should address this. Yeah, my stability problems are not gonna get fixed anytime soon as I'm about to get more AE. All right, let's, uh, let's get this fixed. Put it on to probably harsh treatment. Let's just power it back up. Also, I should check and make sure that I don't have any more... Oh, I do have... I, I didn't... I don't have the trade... I, you know what happened? I was trading over here, I think, but I forgot to update them, so I missed out. Whoops. I need to keep a closer eye on that. I think every monthly tick, I need to check that. Over here, I probably just want to trade for gold for value. Plus, I do have some citizens here, so that would be valuable for uh, pop happiness. So, let's trade in some gold over here. That's going to help. Any other places that I overlooked that have trade routes available? No, it's just Bolarities. I should remember that the Bolarities... Because I'm not going to get notified when the Bolarities trades are cancelled. Because it's not my capital province. So I'm going to... Uh, I need to check that every so often. That does help my economy a little bit. So that's pretty good. Alright, uh, that's a pretty good result. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Um, I think there was a river crossing penalty that was listed there. There's absolutely zero... Like, unless like that pixel is a river, like there's no river crossing here at all. So that's just not... That's just not true. All right. At least this force moves pretty fast. Let's head back over here and uh, I guess get the siege going again. <laughs> oh, this is just going to be miserable. I mean, this is a great spot for a really strong fort, in all fairness. And I think Waluka is going to remain the capital over here for me. I'm going to make it the capital. It's on the river. It's plains. Um, oh, yeah. Here we go. Let me just go ahead and reattach everybody to the proper, not to you, to the proper people. Maybe give it a monthly tick. What do you mean? There's a friendly unit right here, though. Oh, he doesn't allow attachment. Okay, never mind. My criticism was completely erroneous. My apologies. Attached, good. Whew, all right. Okay. Thirty-one day siege ticks as well. That's pretty brutal. All right. Supply shortage off to a good start. This is going to be a long siege, but I guess we're here for it. lot of money saved up right now. Alright, let's just let's just wait and see what happens with the tribal succession thing. I think at this point I'm committed to not ascending with Brokusa status quo. Come on. With Brokusa as the chief for all the reasons I talked about before. Kalsuna is still healthy, which isn't really ideal. Well, not ideal for having a succession that I have more control over. I guess, should I go for a different mission in the meantime? I don't really like to have no mission selected at all. The thing is, these other missions would be pretty big commitments. Although Matter of Terraconesis might not require very much anymore, and I may be able to finish it kind of quickly. If it's all missions for things that I've already done. I also may not be able to get it once I do this current peace deal. Do I squeeze in Matter of Terraconesis right now while I'm waiting for my tribal chiefs to, like, die of old age. I think I might want to do that, honestly. It might just be free objectives. I mean, the the cost here is that if I'm wrong about that and it requires a lot of stuff that I'm not really expecting and that I can't get easily, it's going to be stability to back out of it and go for the reform. But I want to wait for the right moment to reform anyways. When, I have a, when I'm happy with the current clan chief and that succession that would be in place here, I think it does make sense to go for it like this. Our, our fortunes await in foreign lands. The Terraconesis region has been considered part of our borders, yet much of it remains beyond our control. Make sure that it is brought under our influence one way or another. Okay, uh, I guess we have to consult the clan and council first, but then after that... Okay, Wardulia... 
this is... Okay, that, uh, ooh. Of course it's picking all the places that I don't have presence in. Um, Annex Carpetania. <laughs> I already did that for you. And then, um, what is... Oh, I see. Okay, this requires that way. Of course it's picking all the places that are the furthest away. Kessatania. Um, hold on. Kessatania is this one here. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it did pick locations that are going to involve me needing to fight. Okay, well, I think I think this weird strategy of purposely delaying reforming so I can have the exact specific family that I like as the monarchical family is probably the way I want to go about doing this. That being said, am I am I remembering right that the current chief's family is picked as the monarchy family? I I think that's how it works. If that's not how it works, and it's just one of the families is picked, then all of this like planning is for naught. I'm fairly sure I remember that the um, the current chief would ascend to be king or queen, and then their family would become their ruling family. Oddly, what I remember the most in terms of thinking that was the Akenia campaign, where um, my first chief became, well, uh, I don't want to spoil the I mean, I guess I spoil my old campaigns all the time, but like... I remember that her family became the monarchical family after her. Hmm. I'm going to have to wait and see. Also, let's get the clan council consulted. Let's just get this thing going. Uh, I mean, I guess... <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, let's just progress. Let's go up to speed three as well. Oh, man. Okay, so, yeah, I think... I'm going to double check that between episodes, but either way, this Matter of Terraconesis mission only requires some things that I can do pretty quickly. So, oh, God, man. Don't tease me with a breach like that. All right, I'm going to contemplate this breach situation uh, for the next episode, but either way, that's going to be it for this episode of the Catapatania campaign. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.